Toho Studios entered the 1970s under difficult circumstances. Television had become the main source of media entertainment, it could be watched at home, and it could be made with a cheaper budget. Many thought film would die out as an art form entirely. Toho Studios' old guard were starting to retire from their positions, and the company was losing money fast. Tomoyuki Tanaka was aware that one of the few demographics still going to movie theaters were mothers and their children. And so, similar to the 60s, Toho would have to rely on their most tried and true creation once again to help them through these tragic times. That of course being... Godzilla had already been around for 16 years at the turn of the decade, and still had no signs of stopping. Each installment, said to be the last one in the series, was cursed to have at least another three sequels after. Godzilla had been almost entirely directed by a single man up until that point, the reliable Ishiro Honda. Honda had directed seven Godzilla films by 1969, and the franchise was clearly starting to wear on him. Another reliable director would be needed to fill Honda's huge shoes. The first Godzilla film to be made in the 1970s was Godzilla vs. Hedera, directed by the newly promoted Yoshimitsu Bano. The film was interesting and more artsy than its predecessors, but Tomoyuki Tanaka hated the film so much upon viewing it that he banned Bano from ever directing another Godzilla film. The search for talent continued. Toho higher-ups eventually noticed a man who had already directed two Godzilla films, Ebera Horror of the Deep and Son of Godzilla. That man was Jun Fukuda, who was very vocal about his uninterest in directing Godzilla films. Unfortunately for Mr. Fukuda, Toho did not share his feelings and were eager to get him back on the Godzilla rails for the new decade. Jun Fukuda was born to a Japanese family living in Korea in 1923, but would spend most of his life in Manchuria. He would attend Nihon University of Art, and his interest in filmmaking would lead him to join Toho as an assistant director in 1946. He would often work under Ishiro Honda and received his first experience with special effects filmmaking with Rodan in 1956. Going into the 60s, Fukuda would become very fond of western spy films, such as James Bond. In 1966, Toho lost the rights to use King Kong in their films, and so Godzilla was to act as the stand-in monster for ever a horror of the deep. Fukuda was assigned to direct it, and most people, Fukuda excluded, were satisfied enough with the resulting film. The movie took place on a small island to allow for more outdoor shooting and to allow for the budget to go further as they wouldn't need to build any miniature sprawling city sets. Godzilla exhibits some interesting behaviors in the movie due to the fact that the script was meant for Kong. Godzilla was born of nuclear power, and in that social environment, Godzilla 1954 appeared. Originally, Godzilla didn't have any emotions. He shouldn't have any emotions at all. No other film can beat the original Godzilla. Jun Fukuda. Ebero would be followed up in 1967 with Son of Godzilla, a coming-of-age story about Godzilla adopting a young son. Similarly to Ebera, the film takes place on an island. Despite its lower budget, the film features impressive special effects and puppetry for the time, namely for the giant spider Kumonga. The reaction to the film was mixed. Some found Godzilla's adoptive son Minya to be annoying and strange-looking, while others found his childish behavior to be funny and endearing. Children especially seem to love the film, and it's not hard to see why. Ishiro Hondo would return in 1968 to direct what was said to be the grand finale of the Godzilla franchise, Destroy All Monsters. Obviously, we know now that this was not the final installment in the series, far, far from it. Fukuda would take this time to direct several movies, the most well-known being the spy film Golden Eyes. After the release of the cheaply made All Monsters Attack in 1969 and the strange but shunned Godzilla vs. Hedera in 1971, Toho thought it was time to get Fukuda back to work on Godzilla. The next Godzilla film to be made would come to define the Godzilla franchise in the 1970s. Godzilla vs. Gigan would release in 1972 and was made on a very low budget. The movie was campy but very fun and creative in its own right and dripping with 70s aesthetic and culture. The film features classic Toho monsters Godzilla, King Ghidorah, and Anguirus, and introduced a new antagonist, Gigan, who will go on to be a fan favorite. Tomiyuki Tanaka was usually against violence in the Godzilla films, especially the display of blood, which makes it all the more strange that this film has copious amounts of it. Despite this, the film was quite popular among children. Godzilla vs. Gigan would be the last Godzilla film to feature the late suit actor Haro Nakajima, who had been playing Godzilla since the first film in 1954. Mr. Nakajima passed away in 2017. The appeal to children had proven to be mildly successful, and so the next Godzilla film would be made with only children in mind. 
Godzilla vs. Megalon, released in 1973, is the lowest budget Godzilla film ever to be made. The film has a very simple plot revolving around a subterranean civilization fed up with nuclear weapons testing, and so they send their insect god Megalon to enact justice on the surface dwellers. The film features a robot called Jet Jaguar, really inspired by Ultraman, that was designed by a child for a contest Toho hosted in late 1972. Godzilla vs. Megalon was despised by Fukuda, who by this point felt he was a laughing stock. However, despite its lackluster ticket sales in Japan, the film was a surprising success in the United States, where it was helped by an extensive marketing campaign and wide television release. The film even seemed to be enjoyed by American critics as an unapologetically campy comedy. Many American fans cite Godzilla vs. Megalon as their first introduction to the franchise and their reason for becoming a fan in the first place. The film, while lacking in plot, is jam-packed with goofy sequences that are a joy to watch for children or nostalgic adults. Fukuda, nonetheless, was not so amused. I give all my Godzilla films a minus score. Jun Fukuda. Fukuda would return to direct one last Godzilla film in the 70s, that being the explosively delightful Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, which sees Godzilla do battle with his robot doppelganger. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla would receive much more funding than the previous five films in the franchise, and it really does show. The film features the most explosions of any Godzilla movie up until that point. Mechagodzilla himself served as a playground for the special effects department, constantly launching missiles, shooting lightning, and firing laser beams. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla would go on to be one of the most popular and beloved entrances in the franchise. After this, Fukuda would quietly be relieved of duty from the franchise, probably much to his delight. Fukuda would only direct one more feature film in his career, that being The War in Space in 1977. Over the years, Fukuda would harbor much disdain for all of his works, stating, I think all my movies are terrible. Despite all that, Godzilla fans would not let Mr. Fukuda off without showing their appreciation. In an interview with author Stuart Galbraith, Fukuda would talk of his interactions with fans. I had hated watching or hearing about those movies, but later I realized that they really are popular among children. When I was interviewed by the BBC, too, the staff told me how much they really liked them. I just don't get it. Recently, I was watching a TV documentary on Godzilla, and there was my film on the US video rental shop under the title Son of Godzilla. Kids over there apparently watch Godzilla on TV. On a plane ride from Madrid to Las Palmas, Fukuda would find himself sitting next to a man and his young son. They would strike up a conversation in which Fukuda's directing career would come up. They asked him what movies he directed. Fukuda would tell the following to Galbraith. Thinking they wouldn't know any of my other films, I just told them Godzilla. The boy became extremely excited, and his father said he's crazy about Godzilla. The boy proceeded to take out his Godzilla cards. Godzilla's popularity is pretty amazing. Mr. Fukuda would also receive hundreds of fan letters exclaiming their love for his films, and he began to develop an understanding of how much they really meant to people. In 1999, Jun Fukuda would go through open-heart surgery. Fans, with the help of Stuart Galbraith, would send him many cards. Galbraith stated that he felt the cards were very moving to Mr. Fukuda. Jun Fukuda passed away from lung cancer on December 3rd, 2000, at age 77. Fukuda's legacy in the Godzilla series is remembered as one filled with colorful characters and sets and vibrant, energetic action sequences. He was always a reliable and hard worker, even under demoralizing situations and his own self-criticism. His films offer a very unique viewing experience and are still to this day important to the hearts of millions of fans in Japan and around the whole world. Mr. Fukuda surely did leave quite a significant mark on the longest-running film franchise of all time.